case anyone needs the agenda notes link, here it is in the chat. Welcome all to this week's Kubert community meeting. Feel free to please go ahead and jump into the agenda and log attendance. As always, that's a really big help. Um, while everyone gets the notes pulled up, is there anyone new on the call or new to the meetings that would like to introduce themselves and say hello? We'd love to welcome you. All righty. Looks like we have some stuff being added to the agenda. This is an open agenda, so um, feel free to make sure you have uh, signed in on your account that's enrolled in the mailing list Google group. And that should give you edit access in case you need to add something to the agenda. We'll look into. And with that, hey, Andrea, it looks like you've got a bunch of the KubeCon talking points. Yeah, before we go into that, do can we just have a quick schedule check-in? It's pretty much the same as last week, but um, today Kubernetes was released. Kubernetes 1.27, which I think was called Chill Vibes. Great name. Um, cool. Which means next week looks like we'll be creating the um, the first V1 alpha tag. Are they just trying to jinx themselves this time with that whole Chill Vibes name? <laughs> it, it sounds like uh, we'll just have to see if it lives up to its name. It, um, let me find the page. I'll put it into chat. It's got a, um, a wonderful logo of a sloth that. hugging the Kubernetes symbol. Um, it, I mean, it, it from the, the SIG release chatter on Slack, it does seem to have gone awesome. out really, um, really smoothly. Very chilled. <laughs> Fun. So the other stuff I have there, um, so hopefully this isn't um, news to anyone, but I do need to bring it up because it is all happening next week. Um, at KubeCon, we've got the Kubert project meeting. Now this is actually um, during the KubeCon week, but before KubeCon starts, um, it's on Tuesday from 10.30 to 12.30, talking about community, the roadmap and use cases. Um, it is somewhere in the, if you click on the link, um, it tells you what room it's in. It's in the um, I can't remember what it's called. Congress Center. That's the one. And I think that's on the third floor, but um, best uh, fourth floor. There we go. Fourth floor of the Congress Center. Um, and then we'll organize some kind of lunch afterwards. Um, on the same day, uh, Fabian and Ryan are giving a talk at the OpenShift Commons at two thirty about um, Kubert powering GeForce Now. And then I've got a list there of the other Qvert specific talks there. Um, so I've got a maintainer talk, um, which is talking with our end users, um, a, a panel with our with delegates from our end users. Um, and then we've got, um, yep. Um, uh, operator day two stuff by Simone having at 2.30. And then later in the afternoon is Luba giving a non-root made easy talk. Now that's all happening on Thursday. So Tuesday and Thursday are our big Qubit days, but we will have a booth there Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We've got a full-time booth at Qubit. It will be in the project pavilion in the, I can't quite make sense of the map because they're totally disjointed, but we're yeah, somewhere in the, um, in the top corner, top right corner of that map, um, cool. near the yarn wall. So if you're looking for us, that's where we'll be. 
Um, yes, and the other point I have there, I believe, is the Qbert Summit recordings. Hopefully, everyone saw the email. They're all posted. They're all there. Um, if you see any uh, any glitches, please let me know. I'll see if there's a problem on YouTube's end or my end. Um, yeah, it was kind of nice flicking through them and, and actually being able to you know, take a bit more information in. So, um, yeah, thanks to everyone who attended and has been checking out the videos afterwards. Um, and I think yeah. that's it for me. Awesome. All right. Let's see. And jumping into open floor items. Propagating updates. You want to take that away? Okay, Vaps, I'm forgetting your, your not internet handle. Do you want to speak on your item? Yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, I'm just a little confused. Um, I have a question. Uh, is there any intended way to propagate updates from a virtual machine spec to a virtual machine instance? I found that there are no ways to uh, update labels, node selectors, and affinity rules, for example. I guess they can be updated online. And I see that some vendors are actually doing that. For example, Harvester, they do update node selector before the live migration to migrate on specific node. And I was thinking to implement the same thing in our platform, but I see that virtual machine image spec is not, is immutable. Uh, so I have a question. Uh, what is the intended way for propagate such updates? So th that's a loaded question. <laughs> There's some uh, nuance there. Uh, I think that th this ties into hot plug. It ties into a couple other conversations. I don't know if there's a general rule about what we should do or not do. Uh, it's just generally been accepted so far that uh, you would accept changes on the next reboot. But like you pointed out, there are there are legitimate use cases where it'd be really useful to do it on the fly, such as changing labels so that when you do a migrate, you pick up new label selectors or, you know, so that you, you can control what nodes you migrate to, for instance. Um, so as far as general guidance, have, have we brought this up on the mailing list? Because I, I foresee a rather lively discussion surrounding this. Okay. Uh, that's a good idea. Anyway, uh, if I understood it correctly, for now there is no way to update such information like labels. And every time you have to recreate uh, VMI object. Am I that's, right? That's correct. That is how it works today. And we're, I would just say we should proceed with caution. We don't want to do it generally for all fields the same way, because as I was hinting with hot plug, for instance, there might be things where, uh, or like, uh, for instance, some things don't make sense today as, as of 127, uh, like changing resource limits. Um, there, there's just no way that can translate to the uh, VMI because Kubernetes doesn't support it as of today. Now there's potential that in the future that could change, but there's an implied migration at the very minimum behind accomplishing the change. Mm -hmm. And that, by the way, is something that we could explore. We have been mentally thinking about is when you make a change to the VM, next time you migrate the VMI, it picks up the new changes. So you're not necessarily waiting all the way until a full reboot. Yeah, yeah, I saw this uh, proposal. So I just thinking uh, even Kubernetes allows you to update some fields in pod spec. Uh, however, everybody thinks that it is immut immutable, but it is not fully immutable. You can still update uh, image, for example, 
without recreating pods. Not sure why it was needed, but I think we can allow to modify some fields like uh, affinity, not selectors and stuff like that. And to not allow updating any other fields which are not supporting the life updates. Oh, absolutely, on a field-by-field -field basis. And affinity is a funny one that you bring up because um, when you, like that affects scheduling, but it doesn't affect running. So if you've got an existing pod running somewhere and you change its affinity, it doesn't, I mean, you can take effect immediately, but it doesn't do anything until you move the pod around. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, this might be solved by running live migration after that change. Yeah. I think it might be optional some it might be some logic, uh, like option like break policy, or I don't know. So yeah, I think it looks like I have to prepare design proposal or some proof of concept uh, to relax the webhook and allow editing some fields. I got enough information, thank you. All right. Um, looks like uh, Miche. Yeah, uh, the next one is mine. So there is um, this pull request. Um, so basically, they would like to extend Qvert API for uh, adding local time. And basically, this will configure the timing of the guest based on the time zone um of the host so um i'm not familiar with this flag but um, it seems to be a suggested flag for running windows in liver documentation however i'm wondering what happened if we um, migrate to a host that has a different time zone uh, does anyone have experience with this that's curious. I mean, usually when you take virtualization out of a loop, usually the general standard has been you 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 leave the hardware clock on the machine in UTC, and then you configure local time uh, at the operating system level per the user preferences. And with that, there wouldn't need to be a change at the machine level if if that were the approach taken. You'd need it at the uh, the guest level, which would mean that you would need guest agent cooperation to make that work right i don't know uh, i don't know how this local time works but uh, i read a bit the documentation and it says uh, that you should synchronize the guest time with the host so i'm wondering i mean if an application is running in a time zone and then we migrate the vm to another one uh, are we smart enough to <laughs> I don't know, make me adjust that. Valid, no, that's a valid concern. You're exactly right. And that's why I would suggest leaving UTC alone for the hardware level is probably the best strategy because then there's no there's no ambiguity. Yeah, I, I don't is. think is this uh, this option is really for a cloud. I don't know. Yeah, because you can run some really weird edge case problems with yeah. networking, especially when you're not using the proper time zones and stuff your uh, DNS and stuff can fall out of sync and cause all kinds of unable to reach so things. They linked also on issues. If you see a uh, cat, uh, maybe can you go on fixes? Yeah, I mean, there was this uh, this issue open that I reopened because I was, uh, I don't know, it seems there are user that want this. <laughs> But I'm wondering really what is the use case. It feels risky to me, but I'm not the expert. I mean, one one possibility would be that we don't migrate that VM with that option. Or we need some kind of affinity that we can migrate the VM only on nodes that are on the same, are on the same time zone. I don't know. I... I 
I can ask uh, in my team if somebody has a experience with this. I just wanted to ask if anyone here has mm -hmm. known this option. <laughs> Here we can ask uh, more details about the use case. If they don't need migration, maybe we could have simply avoid to migrate the VM, make the VM not migratable. Yeah. All right, then. Um... Looks like CFP notice from Andrew. So anyone is interested in submitting a talk, as always, we're here to help review and support you in writing and submitting those CFPs. That CFP closes May 2nd. And jumping to mailing list. Thank you, Andrew, for queuing these. All right, let's see. Upgrading to V1 alpha 3. V1 alpha 3 to V1. Yeah, I mostly just wanted to highlight this uh, on behalf of Lee because uh, I hadn't seen it uh, get any responses. Yeah. So we've done something similar in, in CDI when we went from alpha one to beta one. And the way I understand it, as long as the new version of the object has the same fields, plus maybe some extra ones, because you know it's it's a newer version, then the update happens automatically. You, you don't have to do anything special. So I was sort of confused when I saw the, the email because it, it should just magically happen. So at least that's my understanding. Mm, the, not automatic. No. So the if there, there's a there's a Kubernetes there's a Kubernetes controller that takes care of all that, but basically it has to. Um, all of the resources yeah, have to be. It should happen, right? It, all the resources have to be, uh, I think, uh, pulled and updated. To, like you have to get the, you know, uh, version string, uh, API version string updated in etcd, and that doesn't happen automatically. I thought as soon as you like read the object, it, it does its magic to update it and then you're good, but you have no, to. No, I, I think update still has to be called somehow. There, there's a there's a Kubernetes control. I think it's mentioned in this email somewhere that does it. Like if, if you look at the code, Alexander, that we did to do this, we um, pull, we list all the resources and explicitly call update to do it. Oh, okay. And, and I thought we it just sort of magically happened as you listed. But... No, that's not my understanding. But but there, and, and that's because we can't rely on that. But, but there is a part of the Kubernetes project that is a controller that's like made. So it, the other thing is not just updating the resources in etcd. There is a, a a field in the CRD itself that has stored versions, and you have to delete an entry in there. And again, there are uh, either you can build all this functionality yourself, or there's like a controller that um, does it. But yeah, so 
all the resources have to be updated, have the API version strings updated in that TD, and the CRD itself has to have a, the stored versions set to just the you know, most recent. Then, well, if anyone wants to chime in on the mailing list, that looks like that's going to be a lively conversation. And then jumping into bugs, we have a few staged here. If there's anything uh, that you want special attention to, feel free to add your own bugs to the bug review. VMs can be deleted regardless of the state of the VM. Able to run a or delete a running virtual machine. Expecting error. Is it okay for it to be deleted? Um, so that's not consistent with libvert, but it is consistent with Kubernetes, right? VM migration didn't happen while ports are down. Let's see that one. Using Multis with OBS. When both ports are down.
Um, I'm not sure this is worry of the cube bird, um, but the user can probably use a readiness or liveness props, which then indicates that the VM should be killed or maybe moved away. Yeah, it sounds like they're trying to get an interface status aware live migration. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe not even liveness pro. Maybe some local daemon that would monitor the network health and then evict the the VM from the node. Trying to are there. Um like custom parameters that you can set for Kubernetes host uh, health checks. I'm actually trying to look it up if we support it. Oh, you dropped a link. Oops, sweet. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've used other standard um, hypervisors, but I feel like at least 
VMware or Hyper-V might have some ability to not schedule nodes when the requested networks are not available. Might be making that up though. It sounds like his questions, because both of those last two were from the same person. It sounds like they were kind of tracking that migration from a standard hypervisor to Cooper. Uh, CVEs, who needs security? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I probably shouldn't say that on public meetings. Um, Anyone want to sign CC'd? Feel like responding. I can make it an update. Sweet. Thank you. And it looks like. For the last one of the day. Context of status. Will be written by. So are we talking about VLANs here? Is that not desirable? Yep, I'm out. I do not have an answer on this one. I can ping this to someone on the networking team. Alrighty then. In that case, double checking. I don't see anything new dropped on the agenda last minute. So before dismissing, anyone have any call outs, quick thoughts, kudos? Going once. Going twice. And thank you all for joining and participating in this week's community meeting. That's the end of the day. Cool. See you same time. Oh, actually, wait, I need to add something to the agenda. Um, I will not be available for the next two weeks. Uh, so we'll need uh, hosting volunteers for the next two weeks. Uh, next week is KubeCon. I think a lot of us, a good That's chunk true. of us will be there. Good point. Um, I'll see if someone's around to be able to host. But it might be better to cancel next week and then pick it up the following week. I can find someone to host that. Sounds good. All right. In that case, thanks all. I will see you here again in three weeks. Have a great coupon. Hey, um. Right on. Thanks, folks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Ken. Bye bye. <laughs>